All right, everybody, this one is going to be shorter than normal. And you're probably saying, thank goodness, culture. Well, <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but usually I have quite a bit to say. This time, fairly succinct, because I've said this in a few places. I, I just don't think I've said it outside of a uh, of a live stream. I don't think I've said it in a video. And um, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to say it. Netflix truly missed the boat by not leaving Glass Onion in theaters for a few weeks. Should have just let it have a month's run. And, uh, you know, all the way up until they were planning to have it up on uh, on Netflix proper. Um, uh, one month from the 23rd of November, the 23rd of December, that made a lot of sense. Having it compete for just a week against uh, some very weak competition um, would have, you know, said volumes about lots of different things, including the success of films that are not tied to, uh, you know, giant long term existing IPs. Right. Of course, these Knives Out murders, these 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 chronicles that Ryan Johnson is telling. Well, they're they're their own IP now, but they're they're new. And there's something that I think a lot of audiences have really enjoyed. But if you look at how sad the Wakanda Forever uh, film itself is doing overall, where it should probably be sitting over a billion at this point, barely over 730 million. Um, you just look at the lack of other competition out there. This was a huge opportunity lost. We'll get into that a little bit more in just a second. There we go. This seems really strange to talk about. I'm 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 saying nice things about somebody I'm not a huge fan of. I, I can't believe actually that I'm gonna say it. Ryan Johnson is right about something. And, and of course it's definitely not related to Star Wars, but he's right because Glass Onion, as I've said in the intro, should have stayed in theaters for a while. Should have been there for at least a month. And he's honestly not the only one saying it. You're seeing this coming out of the trades for the last few weeks. You're seeing it coming out of other YouTubers' mouths. You're seeing it coming out of, um, obviously, the entertainment uh, video folks and everything else. The people that cover entertainment are like, why didn't this thing stay in the theaters? Um, Insider actually did a, an interview recently. In fact, it was covered over the weekend um, with the divisive director himself and uh, published it on Friday. Um, it was also uh, obviously noted here in the article we're showing you from The Hollywood Reporter. And it seems that he's pushing for the film to actually make a return to theaters, um, even whilst it's streaming on, on Netflix, uh, which again starts December 23rd. I, I can actually see his point. What's it going to compete with? Avatar? That's it. I don't, I mean, talk about the best opportunity to counter program, because I'm going to tell you just having Avatar in theaters is not going to be the dessert you want at the end of the year. You're going to maybe want something different, or at least a choice going into the Christmas holiday. And, and I'm going to keep saying it, one week was simply not enough. Even, even Netflix co-CEO Reed Hastings acknowledged that. He, he said it more than a couple of times in different ways now. And he even indicated they left an awful lot of money on the table. And uh, they could use that pile of money right now and would actually kind of boost maybe the next film, you know? The five-day holiday weekend that this film actually showed in theaters, Glass Onion, um, really, uh, really did rather well. I think it was in second place at the end of the five-day weekend, possibly third, but I think it beat out Strange World. And again, Strange World was supposed to be a, uh, oh, we'll get into it. Anyway, the, the, the film itself in those five days did a little over $15 million. That's the estimated box office. They're not really being very transparent about how much it could have been more. We don't know. Um, but then over the, you know, the course of the week, I think it, it rounded out to maybe 17 or 18 million. So it did pretty well. And it was only on 700 screens. So again, it made the four quadrant Disney film, Strange World, look very pitiful. I mean, that's just the, the nicest way to say it. And, and again, it did that on 700 screens, whereas Strange World was on over 4,100 screens, nearly, nearly 4,200, to be honest with you. And returning 
the film to, to movie screens would be unprecedented for a uh, for a Netflix film. It's never been done before. Uh, it would also mean um, a concurrent run, obviously, while the, while the film was uh, streaming on the service, which I don't think has really been done for any length of time. It may not be a first, but um, I don't think it's been done for an, an extended period of time. So having it streaming and in theaters for a month would be an interesting experiment, to say the least. Uh, certainly, it, it obviously hasn't um, deterred uh, Ryan Johnson from uh, pushing to get the film back on every screen that he can over over the holiday season, and I'm I'm with him. In fact, I don't even I, like I said, drop the film now if you can. If you can get exhibitors to 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 allow you to do that, I think I think you absolutely should. You know, uh, when you consider that the original film itself was rocking a 313 million dollar box office um off of just no initial buzz the buzz came afterwards via word of mouth you know glass onion really really could have set up and paid for what uh netflix paid for the, the the two films obviously glass onion and the next film right for the three total films they they really uh, i think they were quite foolish not to make as much money out of the deal as possible imagine being able to like write off content that's original content for your streaming service Put it in theaters and have it pay for itself plus it seems like a win-win so i'm gonna keep saying netflix they don't even have to advertise this they could bare bones it as far as advertising goes they could just promote it through the streaming service itself that it was in theaters or they could even do it simultaneously with it running on the streaming service see it in theaters etc etc anyway it just seems silly to me so if Ryan gets his way, which again, I really hope he does, we may see it back in theaters. And of course, I will make it a point to support it. Not Ryan, not a fan, but I'll check it out. Ryan wants to be sure that the third film gets its due. He wants the third film in theaters. He wants it in more theaters, he wants it for a longer run. He also wants to test that water for having a theatrical release on the screens and also on streaming on Netflix at the same time. He wants to see what that is. And he, in my view, this is a guy wanting to experiment with his own creation. I think that's that's kind of brave, a little outside of the box. You know, and, and again, I can't blame the guy for wanting all of those things. I mean, and I will certainly help promote the idea because I think he's right. Uh, again, I don't like the guy. I, I think he really, really was bad news for one of our favorite franchises and he really wasn't very nice to the fans at all but i can't blame him for wanting to get this thing you know out there in front of more eyeballs and maybe to make some more money okay that's my thoughts what do you think do you think that uh, glass onion deserved more time on theater screens i mean given that there's nothing out there or very little out there to compete with it uh do you think ryan's going to get a longer theatrical release for the third film i i would think that you know he keeps squeaking the wheel he's going to but maybe i'm wrong maybe you have a different opinion and finally do you think that there was a significant amount of money left on the table here just the first film alone with no buzz very little support initially cracked 313 million dollars on its not terribly high budget man reed you guys left so much money on the table in my opinion I'm interested in what you guys think. So please feel free to use the comment section down below and hopefully we can have a conversation. Maybe uh, maybe figure out just how much money may have been left on the table here. And of course, um, I'm gonna tell you to support independent creators here on the platform. They absolutely deserve your support. So if you wouldn't mind, you know, every time you come across something you enjoy or somebody you enjoy, make sure you're subscribed, turn the notifications on so you don't miss anything like the videos that they're doing that you enjoy comment on the things that they're making so that they can improve uh so that you can interact with them and so all of that type of interaction is going to drive uh engagement and increase the visibility uh via the algorithm by the way uh and uh of course share out anything that you think is uh, significant use your socials uh, you know use the opportunity to get other people involved in the content as well it's the only way we're going to grow and it's one of the ways that we're starting to make uh inroads when it comes to uh changing uh changing things uh not just for news and entertainment you know but culture overall pop culture especially you got a whole lot of channels out there in the fellowship working for you 
I'm going to keep doing it myself for quite some time. I'm enjoying this. I hope you guys are too. And with that, be sure to take care of yourself. Take care of others. Wash your hands, of course, because it's good hygiene. And until next time, bye. And don't forget to check out my Rumble at rumble.com slash culture casino. And don't forget to check out my Rumble at rumble.com slash culture casino. Thanks for visiting today. Be sure you're subscribed and hit that for alerts. Yay! Of course, like and share all of the videos that you can as it helps with the algorithm. Have a great day.